and Donna O'Brien. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Josh Whitcomb and Ed Byrne, Chris Addison Hudens and Hal Cruttenden. We start with a round call if this is the answer. What is the question? On the board, six categories. How? Which category would you like? Uh, sport. Okay, the category is sport. The answer is yoga, sushi and ice. What is the question? It is what Eric Pickles uses to deal with trapped wind. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would the three wise men have brought Jesus if he was born in Notting Hill? <laughs> You think your Chinese tattoo says keep the faith, what does it actually mean? <laughs> it in fact just what does Madonna smell of? <laughs> it's been 16 years from now. What will my son tell me when I ask him what A levels he's doing? <laughs> Is it name three things Nigella won't be asking Charles Sarchi to pay for anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. I'm doing nothing until I get more sushi in here. <laughs> what is the, the uh, strapline to the hit Japanese television program? The loose limbed fish eaters of the Arctic. <laughs> <laughs> what answer will you get if you ask Paris Hilton to name the elements? <laughs> <laughs> if you own a bar in Soho, what should you call it to guarantee it'll always be chock full of wankers? <laughs> Is it simply one of three things which are very difficult to sell door to door? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Name three things that can make you lose the feeling in your legs. <laughs> Sushi actually is. <laughs> is it what Andy Murray uses to keep up his training regime? Hey, that's it, is well done. <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for name three things that were part of Andy Murray's preparations for his historic Wimbledon win. This is new then scorching temperatures. Andy Murray defeated the world number one Novak Djokovic to become the first British man in 77 years to win the Wimbledon men's singles final. An integral part of helping Murray achieve his success was his health and fitness regime, which included yoga, a 6,000 calorie a day sushi rich diet and post-match ice baths. Did you watch it? Did you enjoy yeah. it? Did I watch the ice bath? The ice bath. <laughs> 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 he actually has ice baths in a wheelie bin. Anything that can't be enjoyable, can it? Particularly if he does it on a Tuesday and gets carried away by the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it was a historic moment because it was after years of naysaying, years of doubt, years of, you know, can it be done. After 77 years, Andy Murray proved that Scottish people can operate in that temperature. <laughs> I know that the, uh, you know, last year Andy came into the studio after yeah. the uh, after not winning the final. It's kind of become a little tradition, and uh, I don't want to make a big thing of it, but he's in the back of the room tonight there, enjoying the show, enjoying the show so far, Andy, laughing away there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't freeze frame it, don't freeze frame it. <laughs> <laughs> We sent the invitation. He hasn't shaved since the party. Laughing away. Love that. He loved that one. He loved it. You like that one? Did you like that one? The fact that the bloke who was here last year behind him has come back again. Sushi, sushi diet. And what do they do? They give him a load of sushi and then he has to run around the conveyor belt trying to get it. <laughs> it's a major part of his training. Yeah. Yeah. It's so expensive. Those little plates add up. Don't oh they? man, yeah. Yeah. sometimes they go, green plate, green plate. And he goes, drop all the red plate and just go for green plates and get them. It's a really difficult game to understand. Well, I think that that's, they make it deliberately difficult to make it more exclusive. So it was going, why does it go 15, 30? You know, and then 40, love, and he's 40, 30, and surely it's 40, 40. And they go, no, don't be silly, it's juice, you peasant. <laughs> <laughs> they deliberately have designed like that. They, they have made it particularly different. What's the go to? What is the mystery number after 40? Oh, In my head, it's 60. I've always presumed it's 60, 30, 40, 60. But they never say it. I know, actually, I genuinely, I mean, this isn't funny, this is actually true. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> misread the memo. <laughs> I know what it is. It's um, it's a clock face, so it's 15, and then it was 30, and then it used to be 45, but they, for some reason, over time, it became 40, so it's, it is 60, so you're right. Oh, well, annoyed to Dara's team. <laughs> I'm actually in the lead. <laughs> Wandering at the wrong studio. It's a question of sport. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to play the mystery guest round. Yeah. Maybe it's Andy Murray. He's still up there laughing away. <laughs> 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 He could have answered your question himself. Probably. Yeah. 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 Well, he wouldn't. If he'd, if, if he'd asked him a question, he'd have gone. Well, it makes even winning sound like it's quite depressing. Everything's like, oh, well, you know, the first uh, ones that I tried to grow a beard. It's just <laughs> I don't even like tennis. I'm just too scared to tell my mum. <laughs> it was a fantastic radio commentary. Just when he got to the first of the four championship points, the guy said, the commentator said, and now the moment that none of us, none of us in our wildest dreams imagined would happen. And you think, I, you, you couldn't imagine that the world's number two. <laughs> 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 very limited imagination. <laughs> what else is this guy going to be absolutely shocked by? He opens the door with a hand. He goes, never in my wildest <laughs> Oh, is it? And he, he wasn't wearing a hat. And you're thinking, you know, he's strawberry blonde at best. And he was wearing a hat. And then I went off to make a cup of tea. I came back and Murray's wearing a hat and Jock was with you. You see, it was only one hat. <laughs> And Djokovic had taken off his hat, was mopping his brow, and Murray had thought, I'm having that. <laughs> this kind of idea there's been 77 years of hurt isn't true, is it? Cause no. There's been no one who's been going just like walking around, you're right, mate. That's all right, I'll just. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't won Wimbledon in some years. <laughs> for finally succeeding after 77 years. It's a message she'd pre-written for Prince Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Murray is so inspiring because he trains so hard. And I go, that's not inspiring, because that means I don't want to do this. And what would be inspiring if they said, he's not just one Wimbledon, he gets up at 11 o'clock, has a try-up, <laughs> and he goes to the Leisure Centre hungover, and then he goes to Cineworld. And he still wins Wimbledon. Yeah. He nearly didn't get to the final, though. Did he watch the semi-final? Yes. Yeah, they brought the roof on, so he was two sets up, he was whatever. He was ahead, anyway, and, he, and they closed the roof. And his whole momentum went. And the reason they closed the roof, it wasn't raining. It wasn't, they didn't close it to stop the rain. They closed it because they thought it might get dark. And you have to have the roof closed to have the lights on. You have to have it shut to turn the lights on. It's the, it is the reverse of a fridge. It's <laughs> <laughs> part of just turning on the light. Oh, yes. <laughs> the reason why they can't do that is because so close to Heathrow, a plane might land on them. Well, they're not planes aren't moths. <laughs> The whole thing, though, is going to change Britain. I think all this week, children will be getting out tennis rackets and they'll be phoning up their local club and finding out it, it's too expensive to join. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite headline was the, the Sun. You know, everybody's been, been looking at all of his preparation, everything that's led up to this, and the Sun had a headline that said, uh, Murray's amazing routine that turned him into Superman D. Right, which they think is a pun on Superman and Andy, but actually just makes him sound like the world's campiest. <laughs> <laughs> Superman! <laughs> <laughs> Do you burglars wear those 
side by our side. <laughs> Terrible musical montages. Oh. Uh, oh, no way. Way. You know, and you're there thinking, well, imagine they did that for us. You know, when somebody here like wins a point or something, gives the answer, and then there's this do 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 do. You know, it's all in slow motion. <laughs> 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 Me, by the way, for a great sport anyway. Um, yeah. I mean, Chris Froome. Um, yeah, I love Chris Froome. Because he's got a name that sounds like what it sounds like when he goes past you. Froome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't won the Tour de France in 30 years now. Yeah. And you think they know their way round. You, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't he? And the only reason he took up cycling uh, was because he couldn't get into our cricket team. That was the, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the some... only reason I'm here is because I couldn't get into Westlife. <laughs> <laughs> Now we play around called Mock the Creek Without a Paddle. This game involves Hal and Josh, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is our stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news and wherever it chooses to stop one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. Okay, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. First subject is the North-South Divide. The North-South Divide, yes. I, I believe we should build a wall and make it official. I do. Obviously, you know, northerners can build it. <laughs> well, pay for it. But it's all, it's all built on stereotypes. The assumptions are all... It's all built on stereotypes. Like I, I have relatives in Grimsby who come to London and look for London to fulfil its stereotype. So they walk around going, oh, it's, a, it's so unfriendly, no one chats to each other. And I say to them, why, why this constant need to chat? <laughs> in Grimsby. <laughs> there was a little less chat um, and a bit more reading. <laughs> Grimsby would be a cultural and economic superpower, it really could. <laughs> the, the, the assumption is ridiculous, though. The, the, the assumption that everybody down south is rich is unfair. Like London, yes, very wealthy city. It's also got the biggest concentration of poverty in the UK, is in London. That's a fact. Not me, thank God. God, no, thank you. <laughs> no, 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 no. This goes tits up, mummy bailed me out. But, uh... <laughs> See, maybe that's why I have, I've, I've got a thing about this, because I am from a very middle-class southern family, and we are, we, I am a bit of a middle-class southern twat. You know, we're, we're one of those families that meet and everything is lovely. It's like, so bit, how are you? Are you well? Yes, I'm lovely. Are you lovely? I'm lovely too. But <laughs> we're not really lovely, we just, we can't do confrontation, the middle classes. That's why you never see us on the Jeremy Kyle show. <laughs> <laughs> She's sleeping with your best mate! Well, obviously, I'm not happy about it, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, she stole money off you to buy drugs. She is a bit of a character. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well now, let's get Josh a few you have. Let's spin the wheel. <coughs> the topic is the home. <coughs> Josh Whitaker. Um, my, my flatmate um, is kind of filling our kitchen full of all the kind of pointless things my mum has in her home now. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you've got, we've just got this tea bag saucer, the saucer for tea bags. <laughs> it's a very useful item. If you haven't got it, what it is, it's a saucer that you keep halfway between your kettle <laughs> and your bin. <laughs> so it's nice you want to make your cup of tea and then you get the tea bag, look across at the bin and go. <laughs> That's a journey, isn't it? Driving to Leeds, I can't have time. Then you walk halfway, put your tea bag down, go back, pick up your cup of tea, and walk past the bin and out. <laughs> All you've done is create a kind of 
a tea bag, death row. That's what you got. <laughs> you got a tea bag sauce on a breakfast bar. If you haven't got a breakfast bar, what it is, it's an extra yard of sideboard. <laughs> and it's for eating your breakfast. So when you wake up in the morning, you want to eat your breakfast, but you think, bloody hell, it's too early for a table, isn't it? <laughs> Of them until lunchtime. Really. <laughs> oh, it's something slightly higher and less comfortable. That's what I'm <laughs> There's one thing I don't want to eat at at 8 a.m. It's a bar. That is the reason I feel so shit in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> We play a game called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, teams, what is going on here? Is this a poster for the film Shakes on a Plane? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, but whatever he's done, he's thought, I'm going to sit here, the other three windows haven't got curtains. <laughs> <laughs> an Islamic fundamentalist fruit machine. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing just two more stickers and I've completed my Panini World Terrorist <laughs> <laughs> is, this, uh, is this the new Al-Qaeda edition of Guess Who? <laughs> Does he have a beard? No. <laughs> <laughs> For the new red stripe cat. <laughs> <laughs> it, doesn't look like, it, it looks like someone's painted the stripe while it's taking off. So it's like, <laughs> 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 is he doing that joke where he's pretending to walk down the stairs? <laughs> Uh, you chose blind date number two. <laughs> this is a really, a really easy game of where is Abu. <laughs> <laughs> is, he, is he saying, after flying EasyJet, I admit the West isn't as decadent as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> is, 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 he, is he in fact? In, he's, he's been flying. He's been flying with EasyJet, and he's going. Damn these airport delays! I was clean shaven when I. Bought it. <laughs> Do you know who he is? It's, it's, a, it's Alan Katada. It's Alan Katada. <laughs> yeah, Katada. Isn't he got a, it's a lovely name, isn't it? I'm not trying to big, big him up, but Abu Katada. It does sound it like... Yeah. It's it's it sounds like he's like a magician who works on a cruise ship called Abu Kar. Is that Abu Kar? Ta-da! <laughs> 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 we didn't want to get rid of him. We didn't want to get rid of him for eight years. For the first three years, I just stood over and went, Abu Katada! <laughs> <laughs> Presumed if I fed as fury at the West as the fact that people kept going to go as Abukatara. No, I do not want any coconuts or a banana. Stop <laughs> saying have a banana. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it news? Why is it news? It's because they, they, when they first started trying to deport him, uh, Fred Perry had just won Wimbledon. <laughs> He was a real killer. He was deported at 2.46 a.m., like, into Sunday. He doesn't know that Murray's won. To him, it's still 77 a.m. <laughs> That's not the only reason he's pissed off. He's been here 20 years, and they're just getting rid of him just as the sun's come out. <laughs> I've never seen anybody so desperate not to go back to Jordan since Peter Andre. <laughs> I wanted it to be like a rom com, and Theresa May was going to change her mind at the last minute and run to the end. Crashing <laughs> <laughs> on the window, going, no, and then she turned around, and there he is. Yeah. <laughs> I was never leaving. <laughs> They hired a private charter flight, didn't they? Yeah. People were going, well, you couldn't really go on a scheduled flight. You aren't going to want to fly with Abu Qatar <laughs> on the same plane. Although, ironically, it's probably the safest flight you've ever been on. <laughs> yeah, let's put that as the, uh, you know, when you have to click on the plan on the, uh, when you're booking a seat, there'd just be a picture of Abu Qatar. <laughs> Great, I think. <laughs> Seven pounds, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it costs 50 grand, apparently, to hire a private jet for him to fly. 
And they were thinking of putting him on Ryan there, but apparently there's a special beard supplement, and it would have been... <laughs> <laughs> Where is he heading to now? He's heading to... Uh, is it Mwaka Prison? Mwaka Prison, Mwaka yes. Mwaka Prison. The yeah. Telegraph are comparing us to nights. Yeah, well, the it's Telegraph is a piece of prison. prison. I think the Telegraph coffee. presumes, yeah. because the prison has, you know... But and I think it, it, his cell has a bed. They don't hang him upside down from the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one was, there's a prison supermarket. And you think, well, there's probably a few things going missing from there, aren't there? <laughs> <laughs> there's like one cashier and 43 store detectives. <laughs> there's a pottery room as well. And I, I've just got an image of him making a... Like the scene from Ghost with him. <laughs> and then the Osama Bin Laden's ghost in the passage. <laughs> Hand his <laughs> 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 he was his prison as a result of his deportation. This is Andy Murray. Andy Murray. Yeah. 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 He was pretty popular on Saturday, <laughs> and then he got deported early on Sunday morning. And by Sunday evening, Andy Murray was like the most popular man in the country. <laughs> <laughs> is that true, Andy? Andy's having a big laugh about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, you can't. Uh, stop, freeze! Stop it! Putting on the freeze face! Uh, <laughs> it's Theresa May. Theresa May. Yeah. Theresa May, the Home Secretary Theresa May, who is um, the most extraordinary sounding politician you've ever heard <laughs> in your life. She constantly talks like that, like she's that far going batshit! Stop asking these very difficult questions! <laughs> a challenging week for Ed Miliband. Because he's because still Ed Miliband. Ed Miliband. <laughs> <laughs> May we have some specifics, please? It's uh, his brother coming to stay. <laughs> <laughs> How are things in New York? Really good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Really, you think we should move on from this? <laughs> Did he have uh, tea the day after his win? Number uh, 10. Yes, he did, but he went to number 10. There were political leaders there. Yeah. Well, and they laughed. They laughed awkwardly, the political leaders. There they are, all <laughs> laughing, while Andy Murray looks on going, what happened? They think <laughs> Nothing amusing has happened. Why? <laughs> still laughing now. Look at him. Look at him there. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> there is. Oh, God, I wish he'd come again. This is really bad. This is really bad. Last year, when he lost in his moment of need, we looked after him. Yeah, yeah. Now, he can't be asked, can he? <laughs> <laughs> he's with a oh. prime minister. He's dead to us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fair to think that we were there when he. Mm -hmm. And now. We let him fly. We let him fly. Go, go, go. go, go. If, he, if he doesn't, he'll come back to us. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we need to worry. Since he came to see us, he's won the US Open, he's won Olympic gold, he's won Wimbledon. I've heard Arsene Wenger's been on the phone for tickets. <laughs> So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. Okay, here we go. The first subject is unlikely things to hear on daytime TV. Well, these four date from the early part of last century, somewhere wear and tear, a little bit of tarnishing there. But uh, please welcome today's Loose Women! <laughs> Welcome to Channel 4 Daytime, or as you said to your boss this morning, working from home. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming up next, two programmes you don't want to get confused, Escape to the Countryside and Bargain... Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> the next programme is Pointless. It's the Jeremy Kyle Show. <laughs> up, Telly Tubby's Uncut. Yes, you're going to get to see Tinky Winky's Winky <laughs> and Dixie's La La. <laughs> Next, Judge Judy. I have, she's shit. <laughs> oh, and welcome to Let's Decorate the Shit Out of This House. <laughs> Today we're decorating the shit out of a three-bed Sammy in Orpington. Let's do it! Next up, a 
another property mm. programme, which is pretty offensive when we consider you're all unemployed. Mm. <laughs> Hello, welcome to this morning. Uh, I'm Philip. I'm a man on television, so I can go grey and look older. Uh, this is Holly. One wrinkle and she's finished. <laughs> David wanted to retire by the sea, so we advised him to buy him knowledge, because by the time he's retired, the sea will have come to him. <laughs> Next on Flog It, the team meet their greatest challenge yet, a dead horse. <laughs> version of Cash in the Attic. It's family in the basement. <laughs> oh, and welcome to Let's Cook the Shit Out of the Shit! <laughs> and now on BBC One, let's make an appointment with doctors. If we phone now, we may be able to see them next Thursday. <laughs> Welcome to A Place in the Sun, the show that's for people who aren't sure if they want to live in Britain or move abroad. First up, Abu Qatada. <laughs> Next up on ITV3, it's a cutting-edge American drama. I'm only joking, it's Taggart again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and welcome to I'm Gonna Sell These Antiques If It Fucking Kills Me! <laughs> On likely things to hear in hospital. I'm afraid we've lost him, but in my defence, Dr. Dre is just a stage name. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm afraid you have had a stroke, so can you now take your hand out of my trousers? <laughs> The good news is I can save your leg. The bad news is I can't save the rest of you. <laughs> it's half stop. Quick, get the different Ah, oh, sorry, he's dead. <laughs> Look, who's the doctor here? Me or you? Seriously, I've been awake for so long, I can't even tell anymore. <laughs> Okay, I think we should remove the mole. How did it get up there? <laughs> Welcome to Axford Hospital. Why not join me in playing pregnant or fat? <laughs> now, students, we know the operation has been a failure because we heard a buzzing and his nose lit up. <laughs> Welcome to the cardiology unit. <laughs> no, you've got to leave this afternoon, Mrs. Smith. We need your bed. I'm shagging a nurse in it at four o'clock. <laughs> your husband is in a stable condition. His room's filthy and there's horse shit everywhere. <laughs> You could look at it that way, or you could think of it as gaining a hook. <laughs> Glenn, that's my former husband. Well, because you asked me to bring in my ex, Ray. <laughs> I'm afraid we're a bit short of time today. Do you mind if we pull the sheet over you now? <laughs> Sorry, we're all full up at A and E. We're going to have to send you to B and Q. <laughs> You'll just feel a small prick, and then I'll pull my trousers up. Won't bother you again. <laughs> now, what seems to be the problem? Fuck you now!
And Dara's back for more mocking at the same time next week. No holding back Lord Sugar next over on BBC One in The Apprentice. Why I fired them.